So, five questions the Bengals need to answer this all season. Now, before looking at this article, I want to kind of get my thoughts and opinions on five questions I would want to see asked. And then kind of see where the, this website <coughs> is also thinking in terms of that question. So, number one, my most important question is, what direction are you taking this offensive line? And what I mean by that is, if you bring back Frank Pollock, right? You don't fire Frank Pollock and you say, hey, listen, he's not the problem. I think he's part of the problem, but majority of the problem, I will say. But at the end of the day, you know, the Bengals are going to do whatever they think the best is for the Bengals. So that's the case. You're like, I'm just, we're not getting rid of Frank Pollock. He's still the guy. Then the question becomes, okay, what are you doing with the offensive line? Are you A, going to relaunch the offensive line, which means sign Jonah back, hope that everything gets fixed and works out better in the second year, or option B, draft a new right tackle, figure that out, and kind of try to, you know, patch it with maybe pick up a free agent, a backup left guard free agent for Cordell Volson, have a job, comp job competition there, Maybe draft the right tackle in the first round, get a franchise tackle, have him slowly over time become the starter, maybe sign Jonah back for a contract. That's option B. Or option C, and I'd like to call it this way, it's called F it. F space I-T. F it. <clears throat> F it is, um, we are completely... Tearing down this offensive line. Frank, you're going. You know, left guard, Cordell Volson, we're going to get a new guy. Right tackle, we're getting someone new. Kappa should be fine. Teddy K should be fine. And obviously, Orlando Brown, we're not getting rid of him. But that's the effort option. Effort option is left guard new, right tackle new, coach new. And then option D is what I think the Bengals will do is focus, over focus, hyper focus on the right tackle position. Try to make that the biggest problem. And that's why this year did not go well with the offensive line and fix that position. Keep Frank Pollock, keep everything, just get a right tackle, draft the right tackle. And slow and re-sign Jonah Williams, and then slowly transition from Jonah to the right tackle. That's what I feel like they're going to do. I'll be honest with you. Maybe they sign a couple backup free agents. Maybe they draft a guard or two as a backup to Cordell Volson. But I don't see us getting a permanent fix at the problem into next season. This might still be a problem next season. Number two, second one, T Higgins. The question we have to answer this offseason is, what are we going to do with T. Higgins? Are we going to move forward with him? Are we going to, first off, franchise tag him? I think that's the most obvious question, what we're going to do with him. Are we going to franchise tag him or not? If we franchise tag T. Higgins, then the question becomes, okay, what's our, when are we going to get a contract done, Right? Because if you franchise tag him, you have to, I believe it was July 16th, to get a long-term contract done with a guy before the season starts and you can't get a contract done with him. So then it becomes, okay, so you're going to get a long-time contract running with him. If you do get a long-time contract done with him, how much money is left for the other guys and who else are you going to bring back, right? That's my number two question. My number three question is, how are you going to replace DJ Reader? Are you going to do it through free agency or the draft? Number four, why Why not draft a tight end? Why not spend big money at the tight end position this offseason? And I don't mean go out there and get someone like Irv Smith, who we knew had problems going into this year. Let's be honest. Everyone had a crystal ball and could tell that either this year, we went into this year thinking... Either Irv's going to get hurt for half the year and he's not going to play, or maybe he won't be that effective in no offense. It ended up being the latter of the two. Well, he did get hurt for a little bit of time still. Are we going to address the tight end position at all? And number three is going to be... 
how are we going to... Mm, I was going to say, how are we going to stop the run in 2024? But that's not really a question. More or less just like, <clears throat> you got to get a better scheme. Not scheme, but better players to put in your scheme. I guess number four is... Or, sorry, <clears throat> not number four, number five. I think that's number five. The last question is this. What are we doing with the running back position? Because, as I said many times, we have until March 19th to figure out what we're doing with Joe Mixon. If we cut him, we save $3 million. If we keep him, then we have to pay him $3 million veteran minimum, a veteran guaranteed bonus, and he's going to get that money. So... We only and if and if we keep him as of I think it's March nineteenth, then he's going to be on the roster for the twenty twenty four season. Could we guarantee him three million dollar bonus? So the question is, what are we going to do with the running back position? Are we going to go out there and sign the crazy, insane, you know, Derrick Henry? Go out there and try to get Josh Jacobs. Go out there and try to get Saquon Barkley, Tony Pollard, etc. Or are we going to sit back and say, Chase Brown's our future. Right now, Joe Mixon is good enough for us as an RB1. And we're going to maybe potentially draft a running back in the draft. That's kind of the five questions I will say. We'll see what they say. Who replaces DJ Reader? Yeah, that's... that's um, I think, I think that's really the main thing on the defense. Just because of run defense. Especially because of the run defense. You got to figure out who is going to be that guy in the run defense who's going to give us something at least. Give us some ability to actually shut down the run. Because without DJ Reader, our run defense is garbage. With DJ Reader, our run defense is bad. Bad and garbage are not the same thing. That's why I said I could see us, if we don't get DJ Reader back, I could see us drafting a defense lineman in the first two rounds. Probably not the first round, but probably the second or third round, at least. Is, is Jonah Williams back? See, the thing I think about Jonah, right? He had a very iffy season. Not really that good. Kind of ups and downs. And I think if he hit free agency, he would not be... He would not get a big contract. I don't think he would. I think we could get him back for a reasonable deal... And if they can get him back for a reasonable deal, they're going to do that. Because whether or not they take a right tackle in the first round or not, they're going to want him back as an insurance policy to have in case they don't. Or if they do, just to have a guy to transition to. What, what to do about T. Higgins? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's you franchise tag him 100%. And I think what you do after that is you see you work out the contract with Jamar Chase, see how much money Jamar Chase wants. And any money left after that, you kind of work it around with T. Higgins. Problem with that mentality, what I just said is, if you do that, you're going to use up the rest of the pie for T. Higgins, and you're not going to bring back players like Cheeto, DJ Reader, Tyler Boyd, Irv Smith. It's not saying much. Um, Irv Smith-wise, not saying much. And Akeem Davis-Gaither, there's guys like that you're not going to bring back because of it. Is it time to move on from Joe Mixon? Here's what I'll say about Joe Mixon, right? Is I don't think it's a problem of... It's not an immediate problem, right? When you go down and list all the problems of Cincinnati Bengals right now, the running back position, while yes, it is a very crucial part of our offense, we need to have a good run to, in order to be successful. I think it's not in any way the top problem on our list. Because you gotta remember, Chase Brown is going to take a next step forward next year. He looked really good this year in his rookie season. If he got more carries and more touches, he probably would be a better running back. So, well, yes, you might say, well, the idea is, well, what are we going to do with, you know, Ch I mean, Joe Mixon. I'm, my face is just, like, destroyed right now for some reason. Anyway, um, Joe Mixon still had 1,300 yards. And someone commented down below, and they were correct about this, that, you know, if you look at it in the per-touch basics and, how explosive he was off the ball. He wasn't really explosive at all. And he wasn't. But in the end of the day, he's not the future. Joe Mixon is not the future of this team. The future of this team is Chase Brown. So everything's been geared toward Chase Brown. So 
I don't. I think if you do move on from Joe Mixon, you're just getting another veteran running back. And in reality, it's all going to be that he's going to be your backup and Chase is going to be your future. Secondary issues. Yeah, no. Lou said it best. It was a dark day when we lost Jesse Bates and Von Bell. Um, I think Jordan Battle really came through and really showed us that, you know, we don't have to be sad and we can be happy again. Um, Nick Scott was an absolute trash can, but... Nick Scott was always going to be a bridge safety for Jordan Battle, so I'm not really too upset about that as much. Um, I will say, though, when it comes to injuries, we definitely have had problems with Cam Taylor Brick going down for half, well, ending part of the season and Cheeto getting hurt here and there and us really being lacking the position. Poison Ivy got hurt. Um, I think it's something you will address in, in um, free agency. If anything, just to bring back maybe a smaller player or a lesser, you know, player. Just bring him in. Just have as rotation purposes. And it's very possible we draft a corner or two. Or a safety, you know, and you kind of just put him into rotation. Um, I think that even with us lo potentially losing Cheeto, I think Cam Taylor Britt's still going to be an amazing player for us. Mike Hilton, still on the contract. Um, DJ Turner, obviously a rookie, going to be a second-year guy. He's going to get better, by the way. A lot of people hate DJ Turner because he's had a very ups and down seasons, but he'll he'll be a lot better the second year. And then number four, obviously, is where we got to figure out what we're going to do there. And whether or not that ends up being Poison Ivy, which this year hasn't got many snaps, and he did get hurt at the end of the season, but even before that, he didn't get many snaps at all. Potentially, we go somewhere else. And we go free agency. Maybe we go with the draft and that becomes the number four guy. I'm not really too worried about our secondary. If we're going to cut Nick Scott, which is going to give us some money there. And we could potentially, again, like I said, draft a safety or draft a corner or maybe both. And kind of have that rotation in that way. Tyson Anderson is going to come back from IR. We lost him for majority of the season, which really sucked. Obviously, again, like I said... You know, we're getting Poison Ivy back, and he could have a really big step up in his second season. Like, with secondary-wise, it was definitely a problem, but I think our problem was a lot of a problem was our run defense. So teams were able to run the ball all over us, which obviously opens up the pass game. And I think a lot of our problems was the fact that we weren't getting pass rushes on the quarterback. We weren't getting after quarterbacks. Which, you know, kind of does expose secondaries a little bit. Because, you know, if you have to if you have to cover your guy for 10 seconds because no one gains the quarterback, there's a problem. I think these are all things that, you know, everything that I'm talking about here works in unison. You can't have the best lockdown secondary with zero pass rush. Can't do it. You can't have a bad, best lockdown secondary to stop the pass when you can't stop the run. Just can't do it. Everything works in unison. So to say we have a secondary issue, I don't think it's true. I think, because I, I kind of look at our, a defense like a plumbing problem, right? You know, you have plumbing in your house. You might think the plumbing problem is here. You're like, this is leaking right here and it's just leaking and that's the problem. Reality wise, here's the problem. There's a pipe broken all the way over here. And what's happening is all the water is being shoved through that line and overflowing too much and bursting this pipe right here. If this isn't broken, this isn't bursting. So you might say, okay, I need to fix this little problem where it's bursting, right? Tape it up or new pipe and anything. But then after a couple weeks, maybe a month, it starts bursting again. You're like... I just replaced that. What's going on here? You didn't fix the problem with the broken pipe. You just fixed the bursting pipe. This is still going to be as bad as it was before. Pushing water too much through the pipe. Bursting the pipe. You see what I'm saying? You, The secondary is the bursting pipe. It's a, it's a, a very in-your-face exposed problem. But a lot of it is because of the broken pipe that is the run game. Allowing the run, not getting to the quarterback. That's the problem right here with the bursting pipe. Because of the fact that we 
and a lot of times teams do this, is they look and they hyper-focus on that bursting pipe, and they don't look at the main root of the problem. I've said it many times with the offensive line as well. You try to hyper-focus on right tackle, you're not going to fix the problem with the offensive line. I'm sorry, you're just not going to do it. You gotta realize the root source of the problem with our secondary. And it's a unison group of defense. The run game, we gotta stop that. That's gonna make teams more one dimensional. They have to pass the ball more. Then we can start getting to the quarterback, getting pressure on the quarterback. And then your secondary looks better. Just how it works. Look at Alabama, for example. Alabama has one of the best. Well, not, not not one of the best. They have a great secondary. They usually don't have the best secondary players. There's already been three NFL players at the cornerback position from Alabama who were successful. Dre Kirkpatrick, Marlon Humphreys, and there's actually a third guy I can't think of right now. And then this year, they might actually have two guys. Koi McKenzie and um, Arnold. Nonetheless, though, Usually, you do not see. In three, right now, okay, I'll say two right now successful corners in the last 70 years in the NFL from Alabama. Their secondary looks good, gets drafted to the NFL, and has success, you know, to some degree because of the fact of how good their defensive line is. When the defensive line can get to the quarterback within three, four, well, two, three seconds, you don't have to cover that long in the secondary. And that's why Alabama corners, they look good. Because when the guy's in the backfield sacking the quarterback and you're a secondary player, you got you have to cover for like two or three seconds. That's it. We're not going to be able to fix everything this offseason. Okay? And while as fans, we want to sit here and say, everything has to be fixed. You have to do the yes. The end of the day is, that's not realistic. I don't expect them to fix every living problem this offseason. Because first off, you don't know how fixing problems are going to go. You might fix one thing and then someone else becomes a problem, right? What I want to see this offseason, and what answer, or the question I want to answer, are they moving in the correct direction? What I mean by that, is are they still in a state of denial that they think, oh, this isn't a problem, this isn't a problem, this isn't a problem? Like my plumbing, plumbing analogy. Are they still hyper-focusing on fixating on the bursting pipe? Or are they actually looking for the root cause? That's the thing I want to find out this offseason. What are they actually looking for? What are they trying to work on? Because at the end of the day, we could sit here and say they should do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They should sign this guy, sign this guy, fire Frank Pollock, do this, this, and this, right? But at the end of the day, we as fans can only say so much. We need to see action from the team. And even if the action is little, and we're disappointed with how little it is, as long as they're going in the correct direction realizing what they need to realize, I'm going to be happy with this offseason. Could this offseason be perfect? Absolutely. Do I think it will be? No. I just hope we get a generalized direction and, we, and we're good in that aspect. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next one.